Hello, my friends. This is the Fat Man's continuation of my 30-day world challenge. Uh, not necessarily in any specific order, but we will work our way through this list. We are getting there. Not too many more left to do. Uh, this particular one is, who is the most nefarious villains in your world? Well, that's a tricky question because as I've established in a previous entry into this, which kind of commonly mimics this thing, uh, who's the bad guy? How do you, the house lord or house lady, determine who's the bad guy and who isn't? Are there guilds that are acting, uh, uh, you know, in self-interest and not to... Uh, follow what you wish them to do or is there uh, pirate lords or gutter gangs you know a, a nefarious cult that's harassing some of your colonists uh, that's a matter of how your game progresses and how you connect things together and how you choose to define what is and what isn't nefarious and who those nefarious villains shall be now in a larger group campaign where you're working in uh, you know collusion with other game ma uh, other players who are sharing information on the larger regions of the of their surrounding space or interacting with each other via may perhaps a mediator the uh, possibility of having some nefarious organization or individual crop up and then move about is plausible you know, we have several event roles that allow for unexplained murders or, or terrorist attacks and, and uh, uh, the very things that make society tremble in the middle of the night. And the whether or not you, the house lord or lady, pursues to eliminate this individual or, or uncover the mystery of what's causing these, these, uh, these mishaps or what have you is up to you, the player. You know, if you choose to go to that direction, if you choose not to, then you just shrug and roll it off and go forward. As I've told my beta players back in the day, I've said that whenever possible, personally, I try to link things together because it develops a storyline. You know, if this event and that event have a lot of similarities to it, even though maybe five or six cycles have gone by, uh, linking them together does a couple things. One, it, it lessens the amount of new stuff I have to design and come up with so I don't have yet another nefarious operation or group. Who wants to have 20 or 30 nefarious groups or villains running around when it's better to have two or three and eliminate them as best you can as you go before allowing a new one to crop up. And then there's the mixture of events. So sometimes events can occur they just seem, if you follow them in progression, to be a connect the dots kind of thing. And that's a matter of how you view how these come up. I've had some players come up with some pretty fantastic storylines following this series of seemingly unconnected events, yet by the way they're worded or the way the player chooses to interpret them could very well be connected in some fashion. So it's not a bad deal. There are no particular nefarious people or organizations. Although, as I stated before, in my personal beta test game and in several of my friends' beta test games that were interconnected, that uh, the, the, uh, the One True Path, the cult, the OTP, uh, is a very nefarious organization. Holotech is a nefarious guild. They are very well established in, in our particular game world of having uh, ulterior motives mostly dealing with greed and what's in the best interest of Politech and not everybody else. Uh, they believe in the company store policy and being able to be the power behind the throne and in doing so they attempt to bogart planetary resources and, and uh, access. Whenever possible they discourage additional uh, the, the house allowing additional guilds to become established in the region. And it's not to their advantage or their benefit to do that and to allow it to happen. And then they're not unknown for dabbling in things and stirring up problems and outright, occasionally outright skullduggery and in in, in uh, hiring mercenaries to cause a problem. This goes back to kind of full circle when we talk about things like uh, what are the, you know, nefarious villains of the of the game per se 
So in some scenarios, uh, I've had gutter gangs that become large enough to be involved in other players' regions because their regions were closer to mine. And it made sense to link them together because it implied, the roles implied that this, they were part of a much bigger organization. And so the house lords would then collaborate or have their minions collaborate in attempts to control or subvert these particular nefarious forces. That's the other side of the coin. The mechanics are there. The negotiation rules allow for a house to approach one of these nefarious organizations and suborn them. You know, you can go in and you can, can you can either convince them to to go and mess with go go operate in somebody else's territory by giving them support and and maybe maybe some information on good targets and things like that. So a you've got them out of your region, so they're no longer messing with your stuff. B, they're now harassing one of your neighbors or one of your fellow players, and that's to your advantage, because that you can use, utilize them to do your dirty work for you, or as a smoke screen for some of your more uh, candlestein operations. Of course, that's a matter of player preference. Others absolutely are adamant that they're going to follow the, the lawful good mindset and uh, eliminate these scoff laws and and breakers of the of the imperium and common law so it's a matter of choice and what have you so there's an answer to that one